Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is Sabbath and the Law. Now, here's Pastor Kerry. Good morning again, everyone. So we are, we are continuing on on our um, Sabbath small groups. And again, as I shared before, it's not too late to sign, uh, sign up. We started uh, this last week talking about the very first book, very first chapter of the, of the Bible, and talking about Sabbath and creation. And, and, and the, the big picture of this is um, that God wants to spend time with us. He created this, this world. He created it to be good. And he, and he created the Sabbath because he wanted to spend time with his creator. And we live in a, now a fallen world where sin separates us from God. And it, um, because of that separation, it's even more important that we spend time with God, which makes the Sabbath even more and more important. Um, I'm speaking to um, um, this church, which primarily are Seventh-day Adventist um, Christians who know about the Sabbath, probably know the Bible verses of the Sabbath. But my desire of this small group study is that we truly have a balanced, grace-loving understanding of the meaning of the Sabbath. And may it change um, our perspective of, of, of what this is about. And today we are going to talk about Sabbath and the law. And so let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for shining uh, the sun on this church right now. Thank you for those uh, that have made this a part of their community, a part of their family. And we're so grateful for just all the blessings we've already received. And Lord, I pray that you continue to guide us as we worship and we, we enter into your sanctuary. And, and Father, we, we know that you are with us and we pray that each, each, each of us can acknowledge, can, can sense your presence um, right now in our lives. Lead us in our study. May, um, may you um, guide us as we um, explore the, the, the meaning of the Sabbath and, and, and that we recognize that it's, it's, it's not just about being right, not just about having the right day, and it's about experiencing it and experiencing that relationship with you. So help us to do that right now. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So Sabbath and the law. Um, we, we have to understand the law in a, in a better way for us to understand um, the Sabbath because first time we experience the, uh, the Sabbath is, like I said earlier, is creation. Um, God created the earth and, and, he, and he, he rested on the seventh day. And then we hear about it a little further on when God's people were marred by sin. And then Abraham, God gave a covenant to Abraham and that God's people will, will, will be through his seed. And through Abraham's um, ch child and grandchild and grand grandchildren and, and, and through Joseph, ultimately God's people have lost their way and entered into slavery in Egypt. So they... Here's God's people in a, in a pagan culture living a, a, a world of, of, of just separate, of complete opposite, really, of, of what God had um, called them to be. So it's confused. It's a confused nation. So God gives them the law. And... And the reality is, we believe that the law existed before um, this moment. It existed, it's, the law is, we'll talk about that more, but the law has, has always existed. But he reveals the law 
to God's people at this point in time as they have been taken out of slavery and they're entering into the, hopefully into leading them into the promised land and God is defining what kind of people they are going to be. So let's focus on the law. Exodus 20, 1 through 3, and it said, And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. So that is the first commandment of the, of the Ten Commandments, that you shall have no other gods before me. This um, resonates because they come from a pagan culture that believed in all kinds of gods. The sun god, the rain gods, the, the, the harvest gods. There's God for any aspect of life. And he's saying, you need to set aside those gods and have no other god before me. We contextualize it today and we see, um, you ask yourself, do we have gods that are before us today? Um, you know, we, or idols is which what we're going to deal with next, is then the next commandment says, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth, beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their parents to the third and fourth generation and those who hate me, but showing love to the thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Okay, so... So the next one is that we shall not worship any idols. Any of you have a statue that you worship at home? Um, maybe not. Um, you know, but, and it says this. We contextualize this as, well, we don't actually have idols that we worship, but we, it's the point of it, is do not, do not have anything bef in front of God. Do not replace God with any of thing, any man-made thing. We just had the Super Bowl, for example, right? <laughs> and speaking of man-made thing, you know, some of us, um, it's, you know, could say this could be used as an idol, right? We have things in our lives that maybe we keep before God. So this is how we contextualize that today. But in this case, they had literal items that they would worship, statues and such. And he's saying, don't do that. I am a jealous God. I, you are my people. I'm the one that created you. This idol is made out of man. If I drop it, it's going to break. It means nothing. It can do nothing for you. But I am jealous for your love because I love you. And if you love me, I am going to bless you. It's really worth what's coming from this point. And then it says, you shall not misuse the name, the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guilt guiltless who misuses his name. Um, the Lord's name in vain. Growing up, it meant you didn't say certain things, right? You stub your finger on a hammer. You don't say what I heard in construction all the time when I was doing construction. Right? Because you're saying the Lord's name in vain. And we can get caught up. Ooh, you said that word. Right? But really, if you call yourself a Christian, right, and you act non-Christian in a non-Christian way, we are really misusing the Lord's name. Who we are, we represent God in what we do by our behaviors, by the way we live our lives. So do not misuse the, um, the Lord's um, name by declaring something. Or in this case, the problem isn't saying the actual word, you know, the word, it's intending that God caused your accident, right? 
That's misusing God. God didn't cause your, your bad aim, right? And all the problems that happen in your life, you know, some of this is your own doing. Other of these things is someone else's own doing. I just had this conversation the other day. I'm not sure where, but let's say if you walked across the street and someone was drinking and driving and hit you, you might want to blame God, but it wasn't God that did that. It was the person that was drunk, that drove, right? And then ultimately, if you really want to blame something, it's Satan that brought sin into this world. So don't, when we blame God for our problems, we're cursing God. We're misusing the Lord's name. So we have the first three commandments. And then the next one is this one. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter or male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigners residing in your towns. For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. But he rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Okay, we believe the Ten Commandments were written by what? By who? By God, by the finger of God. If we believe that, this is important stuff, right? So we really should not be worshiping any idols. We really should be keeping God as our only God. We should not misuse the name of God. And he, for some reason, believes that we should keep the Sabbath. We should work. We should live and work for ourselves for six days. But on one day of the week, stop. It's not about you. It's about you and your God, your creator. It says this, for this reason, we should, we should remember the Sabbath day because it is, um, we remember who created us, this commandment here. We remember who created us when we remember the Sabbath day. The world seems to have forgotten the Sabbath day. And the world has seemed to have forgotten who has created us, haven't they? Is there any correlation? Um, so, and then this part of this. We have this, um, the rest of it. It says, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false witness against your neighbors. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant or his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So God has called, given Moses the law and this is the, um, the law of how um, in, interpreted at the time is how God's people shall live. We're going to put away all those pagan things. We're going to remember who our creator is, who the true God is. And we are going to learn to live in harmony with each other, love our neighbor as ourselves by not doing these things. That's the basic understanding of this. And it was understood that this, these were, when we think of laws, a lot of times we think of, we have different definitions of laws. We have, you know, civic laws, laws of society. Like if I go speed down the, um, the Lakewood Boulevard, I could get a ticket. I'm breaking the law. Then we have laws of nature, physics. If I'm going to let go of this, what's going to happen to it? It's going to fall, right? Uh, and sometimes we look at God's laws as the laws of, like, civil laws. 
Like, oh, if I break it, I'm going to break it. God's going to punish us. I look at it more like, more towards physical laws. I call them spiritual laws. Because this is the law of, of, of God's nature, if you will. If you were to keep these laws, this reflects God's character and who he is. And when we go into Jesus and the Sabbath, we'll go more into that. So, that, um, to understand God's law gives us a bigger picture of what we are to understand as far as the Sabbath. So next verse, it says, or Deuteronomy 11, 1 and 2. There are two places where the Ten Commandments are, are, um, are, are presented in the Bible. Right? And two places that's interesting enough have two different understandings of the Sabbath, if you didn't know that. And here's the, um, um, actually, I'm stepping ahead. First, let's just read Deuteronomy 11, 1, 2. The Lord, love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commandments. Always remember today that your children will not, were not the ones who saw and experienced the dis discipline of the Lord your God, his majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched hand. What this is is the motive. How are we to under experience the law? We are to love the law. The Old Testament understanding of it. We are to love the law. If we love God, we love his laws. And if we love his laws, he is going to bless us and experience us. So, but the next part of it is, here's the part where I was going to add. There are two different understandings of the Sabbath and two different Ten Commandments. And Deuteronomy 5.15 says, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there with a, a mighty hand and the outstretched arms. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. This, so, we remember the Sabbath because he is our creator. We worship, uh, he created the earth six days. He rested the seventh day. But we also remember the Sabbath because of what he's done for us. He's taken us out of slavery. Is the Egyptians, or is the Israelites who were taken out of, um, of Egypt, are they the only ones that have been taken out of slavery? Have you been taken out of slavery? You have. Slavery of sin. And the wages of sin is death. We are, we are intertwined with this. God gave us the Sabbath as a reminder that you are not stuck in slavery of sin. That he has set us free from that. So just write that there alone. The Sabbath should be this awesome celebration because what have God has done for us. This is a reminder. It's not should be, it shouldn't be what we do or don't do. In our minds, we shouldn't be thinking, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't be doing this. It should be, praise God. First, he wants to spend time with us because he loves us and he's our creator. And second, he wants he is showing, hey, this is what I've done for you. You don't have to be trapped in this physical world that you're in, stuck in your life, your circumstances and situations. I have brought you out of that. Now, remember me in this. Spend time with me in this. Continually be reminded. Do you need to be reminded of these things at times? Do you, really, do you need to be reminded of what God has done for you? Valentine's Day is coming up, right? And it's a day to help us remember, you know, the love that you have for your significant other or for someone. The day's there as a reminder of it, right? But sometimes we forget what the Lord has done for us. But if we have this deep relationship with the Lord on the Sabbath, we are going to be reminded what the Lord has done for us. The other thing about this 
You know, when I was converted, I was 20 years old, to, I didn't know what church I was going to go to until after I was baptized. I didn't even know the word Seventh-day Adventist until after I was baptized. I never heard that term Seventh-day Adventist until after I was baptized. I need to re-baptize myself, I think. Because <laughs> it was the evangelistic series. They did an appeal. I got baptized. And they said, oh, you're going to go to this church. And they, we go to church on Saturday. I, was, I, got the, uh, I got that part. I understood that now it's time to give up, go to church on Saturday. But then I would, like, question. I'd really have issue with this. I'm like, you know what? If we're so right, why is the rest of the world so wrong. I'm like, just by majority's sake, if majority should be right, how could every, all these churches, all these churches, you know, in our, in our town, I'm thinking about, how, can, how could they be wrong if we are right? But we see this, Daniel 7, 25 says, he will speak this is prophecy in Daniel. Um, and I can't go into too big of detail of this because it would take too much time. But it says, he will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into the hands for a time and time and a half and a time. What this is saying, there will be an entity that will, is, is um, ultimately going to try to change the times. Right? The times, the set times, and laws, change the laws. What is the Sabbath? It's times and law, the law of God. And we can, you know, you know if you've done enough study on this, you would kind of understand where this is coming from. But ultimately, it's coming from the devil. The devil wants to deceive that which is pure, that comes from God. Right? Think about it. Think about, you know, drive home and the bulletin, billboards, and you see, you know, these clubs or whatever. Something that God created that is supposed to be beautiful and pure, he's made it, Satan has made it unholy. There's so many aspects of it in our life that God has given us. God created this earth, and it was created it to be good. But the devil has turned around all of those things to be impure. And he's done that with worship. And it was prof prophetic that it would be changed. And it was changed. And that is why we here go to church on Sabbath because we've been reminded of it. And the rest of the world has, um, it doesn't. It was expressed in Scripture that it will be changed. Then we have this, Exodus 20, 8-9. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy six days, and you shall labor and do all your work. You use that word remember. Remember. I, I, always, I harp on that because that's the one law that we seem to forget, isn't it? And I think about this. You know, those are Christians that think, well, the, the law has been nailed to the cross. We don't need to keep the law anymore. You know, we're not saved by the law. That's true. That was the understanding. We are blessed. We are saved by how well we kept the law. We are not saved by the law. That is, that is true. It, does, it cannot save us. But if you say, like, if you're going to, like, an intellectually honest Christian, it's, you ask them, okay, all right, the, nail, the, the law has been nailed to the cross. Is it, then is it okay to murder your, your family? No, that's not okay. 
Is it okay to lie and cheat? No. Is it okay to, to worship other gods? They would say no. Or is it okay to, do we have to keep the Sabbath? Oh, it's been nailed to the cross. Right? So we kind of pick and choose on what we believe in this sense. So, God had given the message, given, shown his people his character through the law. The Sabbath is a reminder of spending time with him to allow his character to be revealed in us. And um, that's what it's for. We, the next, the last verse says this. This is the covenant, the law, the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time. Declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. You know, what, what, please, if, you've, if, this, if you're a visitor, I don't do this very often, but if you're a visitor and the first time you're coming to church, come by the next three times. Then you can join our church. No, no, that's not the reason. This is just the process of the Sabbath. This is the start of the Sabbath. We've revealed that God wants to spend time with us. The second is to understand really how the Sabbath is to be experienced. It's not something that we, um, you know, we kind of make it at times, and it becomes a burden us what we do and don't do and he's saying keep the law not just the sabbath but the entire law and put it to your heart write it on your heart god will write it on your heart so the sabbath isn't an intellectual thing it isn't about being right or wrong and it isn't about what you consciously do and don't we'll deal with that a little bit later but it's about experiencing it with your heart. And this, I think we need to take with us. I think we need to carry this part forward as we study the Sabbath, to experience the Sabbath with our heart as with the rest of the law. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for um, today. It's a blessing of the day. Thank you for your incredible love for us. Thank you for desiring to spend time with us. Thank you, Father, for freeing us from slavery. Thank you, Father, for having that connection with us, that you can live in our hearts. And may our experience with you um, May, our, may the meaning of you in our lives, not just because we believe with our mind, with our heads, but that we truly are convicted with our hearts. Father, Lord, thank you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.